everybody. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about push pull, um, what we need to get started, um, what we want to have the dog do in these first series of lessons. We're going to talk about how to introduce the dog to the sport, um, what things we want to make sure that we cover with the dog so they really understand and have fun. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the equipment you need to get yourself started. It's pretty minimal. Um, lots of times people ask us, you know, what size ball should I get for my dog? Um, sometimes the best way is to just test it yourself. Sometimes on a big dog, um, they might like a little ball, uh, like a soccer ball. And others might find they want to bite it and take a hold of it, so you actually need something, something bigger. Because uh, we don't want the dog pawing it with their feet, we don't want them biting at it, we want them to push it with their nose or with their shoulder. And we want to make sure we start the dogs out correctly so we don't have to fix something later on. And if you're like me, when I first start training, I like to train for what I'm going to do in the future so I make sure the, sets, the steps are all being set up um, for success in the future also, not just to get me through the current level or just to pass a current test. I want to make sure that I'm flowing from level to level, so I want to make sure that I'm covering all the steps so myself and my dog understand um, what we're going to do. I prefer to use as big a ball as possible for me and my dogs. So I have a range of balls here. I also, for me, you'll find out what works for you. Uh, I have a tendency on the balls to not quite inflate them completely so they're a little bit squishy. The reason for that is as we go into push ball training, we don't want the dog to hit the ball and just fling it across the room. I want to try to earn as high a score as I can, so that is earned by short controlled pushes, where the dog is obviously in control of the ball and the direction that it's going. If the dog learns on an overinflated ball, that you barely touch it and it just flies across the room and they get kind of excited and turned on to the fact that the ball is flying around the room. In the sport, we want the dog to be guiding the, dog, the ball towards us at all times and that we are the focus and they're bringing the ball to us by using their nose and their shoulder to push it in our direction. So as we do that, I have a tendency for myself, it has worked well for me, to use a little bit softer ball um, so if the dog, as they push it, it doesn't have as much forward impulsion to it. And I have a tendency, um, even like on a, on a puppy this size, I would probably go to this size ball and not go to the smaller ones. But you might find your dog would really like to have a smaller ball. So a lot of it is just go buy, you know, the 99 cent beach balls um, at Walmart and just see what your dog likes. You can buy all kinds of different sizes. You don't get a lot of financial investment and you just kind of find out what your dog likes. Um, when you get, you're going to be able to video at home for multiple levels, and when you get to a trial, they'll have different balls there. You pick out which ones that you want to use for your dog. As you go up through the levels, there's more balls. Um, so you have a choice to bring your own with you, the ones that you and your dog prefer, or to pick from the ones that are available. So I happen to use, these are just exercise balls, um, and they're a, uh, 45, 55, and 65 um, diameter, centimeter diameter. And then I actually, for most of my dogs, you know, border collie size type dogs of that size, I actually use a bigger ball. Um, and I use the 75. The only one that doesn't happen to be in purple, but that's okay. But it's up to you, kind of pick what you want, what works for you. And you kind of pick out things that work for you and your dog. That's what's nice is you get to select what works for you. So once you've decided in your mind um, kind of what you think your dog might prefer, uh, then you get the ball. You need a motivator for your dog. In most cases, you know, a treat that we're going to use to, to get the dog to where they want to push the ball. Some dogs, we want to make sure when they first come out, there uh, we just want to make sure they're not afraid of the balls. And so we might just come out and play with them and do some things with them and just roll the balls around the room and make sure that they aren't overly excited by them or that they aren't trying to bite them. Um, or scared of want to leave the room because, <laughs> because the ball is there. Because he's going to school the puppy a little bit. So 
You'll need a ball, your dog, treats, and I happen to use these little plastic gates at the beginning level of push ball. Um, your dog's going to have to push the ball about a four foot distance um, through a channel. So in this case, as you see set up here, my channel is actually made up. I've used a wall on one side and I've used these gates. And these are actually four of these gates. Two are put out to, to hold the fence up. Two are the length that I'm going to have the dog push. And then there's another one that's holding up um, the, the, the setup here. So these are actually four gates. Two are at an angle. And two are, are making the channel. Also what works really well if you have an X pin. Um, if you've got an X-Pen, then you just double it up so that the eight sections of the X-Pen and two sections are at an angle, two that way, and two the other direction. And you can make a channel either by using two X-Pens or by, again, using a wall. Um, we've had people submit videos where they actually put up cardboard and chairs and just tape some cardboard to the backs of chairs and let that be the channel. When we start Getting into it, we're going to talk about introducing the dog. We want to cover the rules in this first video. And the rules in intro are basically that you can leave your dog at one end of the channel. You get extra credit points if in the channel the dog kind of has to dislodge that ball to get it moving the first time. Then it doesn't move excessively easily. If you leave that ball and you've got your fence out and that ball starts moving on its own and the dog hasn't touched it, then you're actually going to lose some points. So I have a tendency to take my fence and just very gently put a little bit of pressure against that ball and the wall so that the dog is the one that's going to make the ball move. It's not going to move just because there's some air motion in the room. These gates, this makes about a four foot channel from one end to the other. We're going to move the ball down to the other end so we can show you the entire channel. We're going to do the same thing. And just ever so slight pressure, tiny bit of pressure, so that the dog is the one that moves the ball. I'm going to move it out about a half an inch here so the ball will come through the channel. We have a lot of junk out here that normally wouldn't be here. Busy come. We would take our dog, wait, and you have choices. You have choices at that time that you can just come around the fence and have your dog wait here and come around the fence and walk right along with your dog along this channel until the ball is clear. And again, you have to walk out around the gate and hopefully the dog hasn't lost points by flinging the ball around the room, that they've stopped pushing it if you have to come out around the gate. So I prefer to put my basics on the dog. Come here, Busy. Busy go. Come here. And have a wait. Come here. Wait. And the other approach that you can do is that you come around and you stand at the exit end of the channel and then you indicate to the dog to push the dog through the channel, the ball through the channel to you. Busy push. Good girl. I missed there. She did bring it to me and I I missed. Good girl. Good. She she likes pushing the ball. Um good girl. Wait. Okay. And she says, where's my treat? I would like a treat for doing that. And that is basically it. They start the ball, they push the ball, and that is my preferred option would be to stand at the exit of the channel and just have the dog push the ball to you. They have to clear the channel with the ball, so you're only talking, you know, the, the width of the ball to get the dog out and the ball out to earn as many points as you possibly can. One thing when we talk about moving to the next level, at the next level, the dog is actually going to be placed on a mark 
and the dog is taken to the mark and left there, you come back to the other end, and they push through the channel. They leave the mark, push through the channel, and I'll show that here in a minute. I'm going to get all these balls out of my way. Okay, so again, when we're talking about the equipment that we need, um, if we have a mark bucket of whatever size you like for your dog, later on you're going to need this mark bucket. When you get up into the upper low levels, you'll need two. Uh-uh. You'll need two. But in training at home, one is probably plenty. When we get to the novice level, we're going to have to show that we can put our dog on this mark, leave the dog, come to the uh -uh. Winks. Come to the other end, busy come. And have them push that ball. Busy go. Uh-uh. Good girl. So again, I prefer to be prepared. So if you watch the video on foundation training and mark training, it'll show you how to teach that mark bucket. Um, so the dog understands it and really enjoys doing it. Because when we get to the novice level, I actually like to use that novice and get a couple little extra points by using the novice level to get my intro points because it shows I'm preparing for the next one. So if I were in intro, I would prefer to have also in separate lessons from what we do here, I'm teaching dog a mark. We're busy. Place. Then you would position yourself at the end of the gate and direct your dog to the channel and tell them to push. Push. Good girl. And again, at the novice level, they have to come completely out of the channel and clear the dog and the ball both. So I'm actually going to train those things at the intro level when we start our lessons you'll see that I'm actually going to use some of those um, guidelines um, to prepare my dog for intro, so I'm also preparing my dog for novice. As we move into novice, I will actually be using some skills that are, that are needed in open during novice, so I'm, you always kind of working. And that's why I prefer to have teaching that you're always working towards the next goal and not teaching one and then having to confuse the dog by adding in all new rules when you've built up their enthusiasm, you've, you've built up um, their desire to want to do it, and now you tell them they have to do it differently. So as we go through these training lessons, we are going to talk about building a foundation. So everything built upon each other, and the dog just continues to have fun, and they're excited, they want to play. Push ball, when we talk about them being excited, we want them to really show that they understand how to physically push the ball. Push. Busy. Push. Good girl. Push. Good. And they enjoy it. And they're not just trying to fling the ball around the room, but they're actually doing it with engagement with us, which means, you know, they're on the opposite side of the ball from us, and they're pushing the ball in our direction. Good girl. She says, I would like a treat for that. Okay, so that's equipment-wise. Our first lessons are equipment. We need that dog. We need our treats. Our gates, whether it's x pens or a piece of cardboard between some chairs, uh, anything you can be as creative as you want. The rules all you need a channel for the dog to push the ball through. Good. <laughs> and that's another thing we get into training. We'll talk about the different levels and what we're going to do with the dog um, to get them to where they really like the entire routine and they enjoy doing it. 